After our first lecture on nuclear fuel and cladding, we will now discuss the remaining types of in-core and out-of-core materials. We will discuss successively the materials used for the moderator, the coolant, the control systems and the out-of-core components. The moderator is used to slow down the fast fission neutrons from the high kinetic energies of about 2 mega electron volt to thermal energy ranges around 25 milli electron volt. This process is called neutron moderation and is realized by the elastic collisions of the neutrons with the nuclei of a moderator. At each collision, a neutron transfers part of its energy to the moderator. Good moderators have a high scattering cross-section but a low absorption cross-section since absorption leads to transmutation and unwanted fission products. They are found on the upper left corner of a figure. In addition, the effectiveness of the moderation depends on the mass of a nucleus. Good moderators have a low mass because in that case, less collisions are required for moderation. The most used moderator is water, which also acts as a coolant. The coolant allows the extraction of the thermal energy generated in the fuel assembly. Ideally, the coolant should have good thermal properties, low melting and high boiling points, and a low viscosity. It must show radiation stability and low neutron absorption, be non-toxic and compatible with the fuel and structural materials. Water has the advantage of being abundant and economical. It shows good heat transfer properties and can be easily and safely handled. Control systems are used in light water reactors to control the rate of a fission reaction by absorbing neutrons and quenching the fission chain reaction. The materials suited for this application should have a high absorption cross-section but should not transmute themselves into fissionable elements. They are found on the right side of a figure, excluding the elements uranium, plutonium and thorium, which are fissile or fertile and used as nuclear fuel. There are different ways to control the, the chain reaction. The first method is to use control rods that are inserted from the bottom or the top of a core within the fuel assembly. The control rods in boiling water reactors contain boron carbide. In pressurized water reactors, they contain boron carbide or a silver indium cadmium alloy. The control rods are connected to each other to form a control rod cluster and are distributed throughout the square lattice. A second method used in pressurized water reactors to control the rate of a fission reaction is by dissolving boric acid into the reactor water. The concentration of the dissolved boric ions is then adjusted by passing the water through an ion exchanger. The third method is to add a burnable absorber dissolved into the fuel. These materials are called neutron poisons. The control rods are used to regulate the reactor power level or bring the reactor to a quick shutdown in case of an incident. The boric acid and the burnable absorber are used for long-term reactivity control. They are compensating the effects of burn-up, in particular the build-up of neutron absorbing fission products and the depletion of fission of fissile material. The neutron poisons are added to the fresh fuel to lower its high reactivity. They are called burnable because their effect wears off over time as they transform into a form that absorbs very little after capturing a neutron. Boron and gadolinium are commonly used in light water reactors. Boron is used in the form of zirconium diboride which is applied as a thin coating on the surface of some of the uranium dioxide fuel pellets. Gadolinium is incorporated in the form of gadolinia urania fuel pellets with properties only slightly different from those of the conventional uranium dioxide pellets. The materials that we have described so far all constitute the nuclear reactor core. 
The other components of the pressurized water reactor are made of low carbon or low alloy steel for the reactor pressure vessel, pressure riser, steam generator, the steam lines, the turbine and the condenser. The core structural materials and the cladding on the inside surface of the reactor pressure vessel and pressurizer are made of austenistic stainless steel. The steam generator tubes are made of a nickel-based alloy. Austenitic stainless steel and nickel-based alloys have been selected because they have low corrosion rates at high temperatures. The containment structure around the reactor pressure vessel and the steam generator is a gas-type cylinder or sphere made of carbon steel. Finally, the shield building outside the containment structure is made of concrete.